Hello, my name is Kishwani. That's K E S H W A N I, Kishwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the GMAT. We have been solving GMAT math problems out of this book here GMAT Review, the official guide, the 13th edition. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. The book contains 230 problem solving questions. It has 174 data sufficiency questions. We have already solved every single math problem from this book. If you're interested in watching any of the original solutions to the problems, you will find the original solutions in day number 1 through 250. Right now, we are in the middle of so redoing the problems and we are on page number 165. Please turn to it. Page number 165. What we are about to do is a problem that is very similar to problem number 95 that we did yesterday. Yesterday we did problem number 95 the very first problem on the second column and then at the end of the video I gave you homework. This is the homework. This is the problem that we're going to work on right now. It is very similar to as I said to number 95. Here's what it says. It says when a positive integer a is divided by b we are told that the remainder is 6. We are further told that if a over b equals 36.15 was the value of b. That's what it is. We just have to find the value of b. So let's find out, shall we? Here's the work that we have that we had from yesterday, the last video that we did. So instead of x over y, we have a over b. So we have a over b, which of course is going to be some integer n plus the remainder, which we are told is 6, not 9. The remainder now is 6. And that 6 has to be divided by the denominator, which is b, not y. And that quantity we are told in the previous problem that we did on, uh, on number 95, it was 96.12. In this problem, it is 36.15. So let's, let's put 36.15 here. 36.15. The 36 part is our n right there. And 0 0.15, 0 0.15 is this quantity. B over, B over 6 is 0 0.15. That's it. We are done. We just have to solve for B. So that tells us that 6 over b equals 0.15 and we are done. b equals, that implies that b equals 6 over 0.15 if you multiply top and bottom by 100. If you multiply top and bottom by 100, we get 600 over 15 and that's all. And how many 15s in a 60? 60, 60 has 60 has 4 15, 60 has 4 15 and then a 0. So it's 40. B equals 40. That's it, we are done. B equals 40. That was the end of it. Now, if, if you like, if you like actually, we may not actually, depending on how the answer choices are, let me finish this up properly. So what, what, what it boils down to is that A over B, which we knew was 36, 0.15 but we knew that the remainder was 6 which means it is 6 over b which we just found out to be 40 and we can't leave it like this actually we were not technically done here we can't leave it like this we have to reduce it so let's reduce it it is same as 36 36 divided 36 and 3 20th 3 20th 36 and 3 20th now if they were asking what's the value of a that's very simple a is going to be 36 times 20 plus 3 36 times 20, 36 times 10 is 360, listen, 36 times 10 would have been 360, 36 times 20 it will be another 360, 350 plus 350 we know is 700, so 360 plus 360 is going to be 3, 720 plus a 3, so it boils down to 723, 723 over 20. Our fraction that we were looking for, A over B, at the end turns out to be 723 over 20. So depending on how the question is phrased, maybe they will ask, maybe they instead of asking how much is B or how much is A, they're asking you what is the fraction and they give you a whole bunch of answer choices in the fraction form and this is one of the, this is the right answer, not one of the right answer, this is the right answer, 723 over 20. Let's go to the next one, shall we? Number 96. Question number 96. Just give me one quick a second here for a break. Number 96. In number 96 we are told that uh, 6.5 is 
60% are 60% are Democrat. We are told that the 40% are Republican, and we are further told that 75% of Democrat and 20% of Republican will vote for candidate A. The question is, what percentage of the total population will vote for A? What percent will vote for A? Let's find out, shall we? We need the room, so we're going to have to erase everything here. That's it. There we go. This question is actually very straightforward, very simple. Let's make up a number. We, since we're dealing with percentages here, a nice number to plug in for the total population of the village would be 100. So let's pretend that we have 100 people. We'll keep it very simple. We have 100 people. We are told that 60% of them are Democrat. So here's our Democrat, here's our Republican. 60 of them are Democrat, 40 of them are Republican. They further, further go on to tell us that 75% of the Democrat, 75% of the Democrat is 3 fourths of the Democrat. 1 fourth of 60 is 15, so 3 fourths is going to be 45. And 20%, and 20% 20 is 1 fifth. 20% is 1 fifth. This 1 fifth, this 1 fifth is coming from this 20% right here. 20% is 1 fifth. And 1 fifth of 40 is 8. That's it, we're done. So 8 plus 45. 8 plus 45 out of 100. And since we started out with 100, we don't have to do any work at all. This is our answer. 45 plus 10 is 55, so it's 53%. 53% of the people apparently voted for candidate A based on the fact that 60% of the Democrat and 20% of Republican voted for him. Let's move on to the next one, number 97. Number 97. Oh, number 97 is it's just way too silly. One half plus two third times three eighth divided by four minus nine sixteenth. This is, as I said, it's just way too silly. Well, let's, let's carry on here. We have a three here. We have a three here. First thing we're going to do is this. First thing we're going to do is take care of this innermost parenthesis. Innermost parenthesis, and we do that two third times three eight. The three eight on the top. If we divide top and bottom by three, threes are going to cancel out. If we divide top and bottom by two, this two is going to become one, and this eight is going to become four. So what we end up here is one over four, one over four, divided by four, minus nine over six, sixteen plus a half. One over four divided by four is same as one over four times one over four. Because the rule is that, because this is four over one, you see? One over four, one over four divided by four over one is that when we have one fraction being divided by another fraction, what, we, what do we do? We take the top fraction and we multiply it but the reciprocal of the bottom fraction. So it becomes 1 over 4, that's it. Minus 9 sixteenth. And plus a 1 half. We're almost done. So now we can take the common denominator. This is 16, this is 16. Let's make this 16. Let's multiply this by top and bottom by 8. So now everybody has a denominator of 16 and we are done. The common denominator is 16 because 8 times 2 is 16. And on the top we get 8 times 1 which is 8. Here we have 1 times 1 which is 1. And here we have 9. This can be it. I, I must have made a mistake here because now I'm getting a 0. Oh, it is 0. The answer is 0. 8 plus 1 is 9 and the answer is 0. Big fat 0 is the final answer. The answer is E. Let's go on to the next one. The very last one on the page. Number 98. Number In number 98, we are told that the hydrogen and oxygen are in the ratio of 2 to 16. And that's going to be our total. Let me read the question the way it is written. It says, 
Water consists of hydrogen and oxygen. The approximate ratio by mass of hydrogen to oxygen is 2 to 16. Approximately how many grams of oxygen are there in 144 grams of water? Well, let's find out. So it's 2 to 16, which means the total parts are 18. And the question is, which, which, which if you divide the whole thing by 1, we get 1, 1 to 8 equals 9. 1 to 8 equals right. And that's it. Now we set it up as a proportion problem and we're done. Set it up as a proportion problem. The question is, here is our water. Water is the total. The question is, how much oxygen do we have? So we know that uh, water, uh, 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 the water is 9 part. No, out of 9 part water, oxygen is 8 part. The question is, how much oxygen do we have if we have a total of 144 grams of water? And that's all it is. Solve for x. And x equals... Uh, 144 times 8, 144 times 8 over 9. 144, 144 times 8 over 9. Now how do we know if a number is divisible by 3? This is something that we have done many many times. This is, this is something that we should know by now. How do we know if a given number is divisible by 3? Well, if the sum of the digits, S-U-M sum of the digits, is divisible by 9, then the given number is divisible by, uh, if, if the sum of the number is divisible by 3, then the number itself is divisible by 3. As a matter of fact, the same thing applies for 9 also. If the sum of the digits is divisible by 9, then the number itself is divisible by 9. If here, if we were to add up all the digits, 1 plus 4 plus 4, 1 plus 4 is 5, 5 plus 4 is 9, and 9 of course is divisible by 9, therefore this quantity actually is divisible by 9. Let's divide top and bottom by 9 and be done with it. Divide top and bottom by 9. How many 9 does 14 have? 14 has 14 has 1 9. Listen carefully. 14 has 1 9. The remaining 5 is going to go and joins this 4. After we take away 9 from the 14, we are left with 5. The remaining 5 goes and joins this 4 and becomes 54. How many 9's in a 54? How many 9's in a 54? We know 9 5's are 40. We know 9 5's are 40. So there must be 6 9's and a 54. That's it, we're done. It's 6 times 8. 6 times 8. 16 times 8, rather. 16 times 8 is uh, 8, 6 are 48, carry 4, and 12. The answer is there are apparently 128 grams of oxygen, or whatever, whatever unit that they use, in a total of 144. In, a, in uh, 144 grams of water. And that was it. I will see you tomorrow where we will begin the next page, okay? Where we will do the problem on the new page. Bye now.